Dear Lord, we thank you for um, your love and your uh, providence and your care and watchfulness over us. Uh, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for the ministry of all those who've nourished us over the years and brought us to this point in time. And we just ask that you'd uh, help shape us as uh, we seek to be uh, trained in your service, um, as we seek to be um, molded into your image tonight through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, uh, tonight, uh, we started out, uh, on page 44 in okay. the assignment, talking about the zone. Are you an artist? Um, I wouldn't say I'm an artist. I like to write. So I'm, I like, okay. I mean, so kind of. The, have you ever experienced where you've just sat down and suddenly the, the whole thing just flowed? Yes. And it was eloquent and concise. And you look at that. How could I say that better? And and I can't say it any better than that. Yes. And it just happens. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. And then there are other times I I'm assuming because I write an awful lot myself. I just. I'm grinding and I can't get the first word off. Of, I can't get the first sentence out. Yes. I'm currently there right now. You're okay. Uh, yeah. Writer's block. Well, a little. Ha, ha, are you an athlete? Uh, I'm a runner. Yes, I run. You're a runner. Okay. Mm -hmm. That may be a little different. Uh, I'm, I'm a golfer and I, I played basketball as, as a kid. Mm -hmm. But uh, basketball players uh, this time, it's getting to be uh, March Madness. Okay. They, they get into what they call the zone mm -hmm. or they get hot. And I remember getting hot as a kid and I just said, give me the ball because I want to shoot it because it's going in. And I know it's going in before mm -hmm. I shoot it. I, I just feel somehow that that's going to, I mean, I'm not that good of a player, but if you're in the zone, right, you, you can make four or five or three pointers in a row. Yes. My dad took me golfing when I was probably about 11 or 12. And he introduced me to this phenomenon. He got stood over about a 30 or 40 foot putt. And he looked up at me and he said, this is going in. And he made that 30 or 40 foot putt. Wow. And I, I, I just, i just marveled at us at it. And he, he stopped and he just looked at me and he said, there are times where I just get this overwhelming feeling that comes over me that I just know where to hit it, how to hit it. And I know I'm going to hit it right. And mm. it, it just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of years ago in the, uh, uh, at the end of the master's tournament, two guys were in, opposite bunkers on the last uh, last hole of the tournament and um the uh the first guy uh, makes an impossible chip in from mm. way deep in the bunker mm -hmm. and then on the 18th hole of the masters right the last mm -hmm. day the other guy on the other side what does he do he chips in mm. i mean two back to back uh one in a hundred shots right Yes. And so there's this phenomenon uh, of, of somehow athletes or sometimes I will I will draw or or paint and mm -hmm. the thing just works. Mm -hmm. And I look back years later and say, I can't believe I did that. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, it's just blah. Um and, and I can't account for the difference other than I'm just kind of in the zone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What do you think the zone is? Well, for me, the zone is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes. So you, you feel like um, somebody's taking over. Yeah. Yes. Because I'll write so well that I know it's not me. <laughs> like it'll. Yeah. 
I feel like he writes through me. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something about now I'm I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it it's only you know a kind of Christian experience. Right. Where there's this connectivity between us and, and God because the Holy Spirit indwells us. I mm -hmm. mean, um, uh, some of the, the most hideous kind of pagans <laughs> could can get hot and just drain uh, shot after shot after shot. Yes. Uh, but they're in touch with something, don't you think? Yes. And uh, uh, the beauty and the art uh, and the, um, I don't, I, help me with the word, but mm -hmm. whatever it is that we're, we're engaged in, there's this wonderful connectivity with something transcendent. Yes. That's not mm -hmm. unexplainable otherwise. Right. Uh, so, um, there's this passage that I had you read on the top of page 44. Now, mm -hmm. ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, this is 2 Corinthians 3. Mm -hmm. If that came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, fading though it was, Moses goes up on uh, Mount Sinai, encounters God, is surrounded in the cloud and his face is is transcendent with uh, this reflected glory yes 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 uh but they have the israelites have to veil themselves because they can't take the intensity of moses's reflected or refracted glory yes and and even though that glory was fading but he'd just come down from the mountain and it was fading, will not the, the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Yes. And so Amen. this is one of the most astonishing uh, passages in Paul, it seems to me, where Paul says that the veil has been taken away for Christians. Yes. And we can see into the heavenly realms. We can see into the heavenly temple. And there is this, this mutual visual exchange between Christ and us. And we're being made into Christ's image through this visual exchange. Mm -hmm. And we're being transformed by ever increasing glory. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, what are your experiences along those lines like? Um, when do they happen? What, what's, what are things like when they happen? And uh, how do you cultivate uh, that, that uh, closeness and connectivity? Um, ooh. um, like when they happen, like when I get into the flow, is that what you're talking, what yeah, you mean? What, what happens? Um, I don't know. Cause it's never planned. It just uh -huh. kind of comes about. I could say that when I fast, then it, you know, then it happens. Or when I've been taking in a lot of reading the Bible, you know, that then it happens, but really I couldn't place my finger on it that easily. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I have had experiences. I don't know if this is goes along with it, but I remember maybe six months ago, I went into a shop and I just smiled at the lady and she like, she thanked me. She was like, Oh my gosh, your smile just did something in me. And so it wasn't even, I didn't even know, but I had been with the Lord cause I'm obsessed with him. Um, and so, but perhaps, you know, some of the, you know, I don't know, the glory was in my face, perhaps like illuminated my being. And yeah. so, yeah, so I was caught off guard because she was like, it was just such a, oh my goodness, thank you, you know, and I was like, I just smiled, you know, and so, uh -huh. yeah, so. I I wonder if these things don't happen 
when uh, you're in a particular place of need. Okay. That's interesting. I've know. never thought about it. I don't I mean, because my experience is, is that, that I'm, I'm not drumming these things up. Right. Right. I, like I said, you know, you, you, you kind of think that, I'm, I mean, I think I was kind of taught or it was implied at least that if you cultivate and engage in the disciplines, then, then that this nearness to God can be, can be had. But yes. my sense of it is that the, the real palpable uh, experiences that I have had uh, in the spirit uh, have been experiences that I've had when I am in a fix. Okay. When I'm in a pickle. Okay. Okay. When I'm deeply in need and maybe, and maybe because of my own doing, right? Yes. And, uh, and so uh, it, it's utterly a grace, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. that, and like you say, if, if you could, if you could figure out the formula, then, then you could be rich. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's the reason why the, the spirit won't, won't cooperate. He, he knows yes. the way in which our flesh will, will, will probably try to use that experience. Right. Um, it doesn't keep churches from trying to manufacture it every Sunday, but, uh, uh, yes. it, it, yeah. Uh, well, and another, another thought, another thought too, is music these days, you know, Christian rock and, and they'll try to emulate it. You know, they'll try to, they've got the lights and the sound and it's so ah, like in your face and they're trying to recreate something that they can't, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's not the real thing. Like I find myself more so going to a station, it's 105.7 in Houston. And it's like, they're singing hymns, but it, you can feel the present, you know, you can feel the spirit in it as opposed to KSBJ, which is just regurgitated, you know, same songs over and over, you know, that really don't honor him. So this is something I'm seeing in my life, you know. You, you, you know, I, I think have this, the same, um, I don't know what the right word is here. For, forgive my writer's block, okay? Maybe mm -hmm. it's, we have the same prejudices. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe we have the same insights, depending on, on the day. Yes. Maybe, maybe the either word will work e equally well. Um, um, I, I know that there's this, I don't want to get into aesthetic theory, right? But mm -hmm. cer certain kinds of um, art uh, opens the the space up for for you to feel peace. Yes, it coaches certain things, and some things are uh, go get them kind of songs where you're trying mm -hmm. to actively get something, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's a, a wonderful uh, kind of. Um, well, maybe that's for a different class, but mm -hmm. but I, I still think that that if you think about um, how that is cultivated and, and what you're doing when those things happen, mm -hmm. um, you can begin to, to think about what it is that really energizes you and what the spirit uses to shape your passions. Yes, which and is then, uh, my hope in all of these initial exercises for each for each week. Uh, after this week, uh, those those exercises, I'm going to go back and reclaim them all. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more of our work will be with those exercises because our our heavy theological lifting will be will be done. Did anybody else join us today? Mm -hmm. Today, mm -hmm. yeah. There's another person. Mm -hmm. Who else is with us today? Hey, this is Mark Bushnell. Hi, Mark. Good to see you, man. Good to see y'all too. Yeah, I, I I assume that uh, three or four more will will show up, but uh, it's good to good to see uh, you guys uh, and see your your faces. Um, yes, so we have uh, t tonight. What's on the agenda is is the church is the the Lord's temple. Um, not uh, not the building necessarily, but 
the people and the space that the people inhabit. But of course, I've spent uh, three or four weeks trying to convince you that Jesus is the renewed temple. And so the lesson tonight is um, in, in three different ways, uh, talking about um, three different ways that the New Testament uh, makes the move of, from, from Jesus, uh, the renewed temple, to the church as uh, the renewed temple, that place where heaven and earth uh, are united. Um, if you uh, have, a, well, Mark doesn't have access right yet uh, uh, to, to Mark chapter uh, uh, 12, um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read it uh, here, here in, in just a bit, but I want to, to start out by, by uh, asking you to think about uh, Isaiah 5. Uh, I will sing to the one I love a song about his vineyard, Isaiah 5, 1. Um, Jesus is going to tell a parable about uh, a vineyard and the workers in the vineyard. But the parable is about the temple. And I have to, I have to try to to help you see that. And if if you go to Isaiah five, there is this song of the vineyard. I will sing to the one I love a song about his vineyard. He loved one, my loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. I'm I'm just telling you it's it's the hill of Zion in Jerusalem, but we'll we'll, we'll get there. He dug it up and he cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest, choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. And then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. You hear it? What more could have been done for my vineyard than I've done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Why did this, this vineyard, this field, this temple garden yield only bad fruit? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge. There is a hedge around the vineyard field, right? There's a, a fence. Like in France, in Normandy, there I understand there are hedge roads, right? Uh, God puts a hedge of protection around Job. And so there's this, this force field or hedge all the way around the, the, the temple compound, the vineyard of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed and I will break down its wall and it will be trampled and I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. And the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. So the national temple is an embodiment of all of Israel. And, and the temple garden is the representative uh, uh, garden of, of the nation. Mm -hmm. So they have these trees planted there. Uh, uh, the cedars of Lebanon planted in the courts of God. Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so this, this uh, uh, kind of um, uh, thing is a national symbol. Okay. I, I was trying to think about what's the nearest thing uh, uh, to that in, in our national history. Mm -hmm. And I, I grew up watching Johnny Tremaine. Did anybody, 
did anybody read Johnny Tremaine or see that movie? Mm -mm. This is old, old school. So it's, it's before you all time. Okay. But there was, have you ever heard of a Liberty tree? No. Okay. So this example doesn't <laughs> work. Um, if, if, if we were to think of a symbol of America, what would you, what would you think of? For America? Yeah. Think an in terms eagle, of maybe? architecture. Huh? I, well, I said an eagle. I don't an know. eagle. Okay. Yeah. In terms of architecture. Hmm. America. I don't know. Maybe the, the Capitol building. Yes. Yes. Maybe uh, the White House. Yes. Maybe the, the mall. Yeah. I was thinking New York the City. Capitol, the Capitol. Right. Right. I mean, okay. sometimes. Uh, so um, in, in ancient Israel, the thing that symbolized the nation was the temple. Okay. And the temple compound and all of all that that mattered because all of that uh, all of that entailed and so all of that symbolized the whole nation. Okay. Okay. Yes. I will sing a song about my vineyard. Okay. It's it's a song about Israel, the house of Israel, both the house, the the dynasty and the people, uh -huh. but also the house of okay. Israel, the temple house. Okay. All right. This is the background for hearing what, what Jesus is doing. So in, in Mark chapter 11, Jesus has come through the temple gates uh, the day before. Mm -hmm. The children's choir uh, sang. He goes in on a donkey, right, on Palm Sunday. And he goes into the temple area and he takes a look around. And Mark 11 is, is, is really an it goes out of its way to say Jesus just around at, at the whole setting before he retreats back to Bethany. And then then he goes he needs to and he goes the next day he goes back up towards the temple temple compound again and he he sees a, a tree. You remember this? He sees a fig tree on the way. And the fig tree is 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 not creating any fruit, fruit in this season. That's right. Uh, it's 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 not the season for for figs, right? But Jesus uh, curses it anyway because in the temple of the Lord, when that temple is made new, it it says in in like Ezekiel forty seven that the waters of the temple are just going to overflow and it's going to make these, these uh, national trees so fruitful that they will bear in season and out of season, right? Every month they'll bear uh, uh, for fruit and the leaves will be for the healing of the people. And uh, so you even have this ex expression in Paul, be instant, in season and out of season. And season. Yeah. That's temple language. Because in, in the day when the temple is renewed, the temple will create fertility and it will create fruitfulness, not just when the, the trees are in season, but when the trees are not in season, because there's there's such a, a, a an overwhelming fertile power from on high that has that has invested the temple so be instant in season and out of season is coming from that kind of background okay just just a little extra uh 20 cents worth all right mark 12 the uh, uh the temple of uh the new vineyard workers and this is on page 45 and i've got a picture um um, on page 45, where everything yes. is illustrated. My my daughter, bless her heart, uh, she's an architect, and she whipped out this uh, rendition of uh, the Herodian temple real quick for me. Nice. And then I superimposed elements of the story, and I, I, I show, I'm going to try to show you how Jesus is telling this parable as a form of street theater. You're familiar with the street theater? 
I mean, maybe. Oh, I mean, no. So, so <laughs> sorry. Jesus is, Jesus is really good at this. He okay. goes out in the in public and yes. he uses the background that he has all around it in his in his setting and he tells his stories based on what's what's happening around him wow and so this is a big dramatic reading and he's using the temple back the temple pl place where he is as the background for this story okay mm -hmm. then he began to speak to them in parables a man planted a vineyard I think you just should see Jesus doing this. Yes. Everybody knows what the vineyard is because Jews know that they are standing in the vineyard of the Lord. Okay. Amen. I want to be a worker in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. We used to sing things like that when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we want to be uh, uh, priests of God in his holy vineyard, right? And this is, this is, so he just kinds of, kind of says right here, he's in, in this, this big court, temple courtyard and um, a man planted a vineyard. A, if you look at page 45, I just plop, plopped A down right in the middle of the temple courtyard. Yes. And he put, he put a wall around it. Yeah. Remember yes. that from Isaiah 5? There's yes. a wall that gets in, in the judgment of Isaiah 5 gets broken. But he put a wall around it. Well, the Herodian compound has Solomon's colonnade all the way mm -hmm. around it. Hmm. And, and so this, this compound right here it walls out the unclean portions of creation from that which is ceremonially clean inside there's this force field of holiness that hmm. is supposed to exist within this holy compound mm -hmm. he put a wall around it and he dug a pit for the wine press and i i placed c there in that spot where the sacrificial uh, offerings were made and there was there was a, a pit through into which all of the the blood and stuff would drain all right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trampling out the vintage sort of wine press. And he built a watchtower. See, he built a watchtower, big watchtower, the, the edifice of the temple. Mm -hmm. And I, I just see Jesus kind of pointing. Yeah. Right? And he built a big watchtower. Huh? Mm -hmm. So everybody's getting this, right? Yes. And at the end of the story, the Sadducees and, and the authority figures, you remember what it says? They perceived that the parable had been spoken against them. Okay. <laughs> they got it. They, they okay. understood what Jesus was doing. And he built a big watchtower. And then D, he rented the vineyard to some farmers, priests. Henceforth, they're going to be called tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, e, I put the E there where where the, the the priestly compound or the priestly um uh um apartments uh were just off the side of the temple and he went away on a journey a heart at harvest time he he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard but they seized him beat him and sent him away empty-handed the temple wasn't functioning well. It wasn't ministering to the people. It wasn't the fruit of, of its labor and its, its ministry wasn't really just doing what it's supposed to do. And when people complained about that, the prophets or whoever, uh, they, they mistreated the prophets. And then he sent another servant to them and, and they struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent still another, and that one they killed. And he sent many others. Some of them they beat, others they killed. He had one left to send, a son whom he loved. And he sent him last of all, saying, they will respect my son. F, where Jesus is standing there. I'm just, I don't know that that's where he was standing, but I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. 
But the tenants said to, to one another, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. And so they took him and killed him and they threw him, threw him out of the vineyard. Gee, they got rid of him and they, they crucified him on Golgotha hmm. outside of Jerusalem. Yes, hmm. outside of the temple compound. And what then will the owners of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read this scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Mm -hmm. The Lord has done this. And it's marvelous in our eyes. And of course, we, we've talked about the capstone. Was that last week? I believe it was, or the week before. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the capstone as as that unifying uh, thing that brings uh, people together and, and uh, creation together in, in the temple when it's functioning well. Uh, and so what, what's he going to do? He's going to kill the present tenants and give the vineyard to others. Hmm. Haven't you read this scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it's marvelous in our eyes. Yes. I can just see Jesus looking out to his crowd and it's marvelous in our eyes and then looking back at the corrupt priesthood. Wow. Okay? Yeah. That's the reason they killed him. In okay. the Synoptic Gospels, that's the reason the priests had had enough. Okay. And... He, he is telling this parable uh, in a revolutionary kind of way. Hmm. He's taking down this set of priests and raising up another set of vineyard workers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Well, the other set of vineyard workers, uh, of course, are his followers. And mm -hmm. so uh, Jesus' workers, the workers of his vineyard, or us, the church, his followers, his, his uh, disciples, and we become uh, the new set of tenant farmers in the vineyard of the Lord. Yes? Yes. So that's, that's how the synoptics move from Jesus the temple to the church in Jesus being the temple. Okay. Right? Jesus yes. is still the temple, but his people are somehow a part of it because he's bestowed that on his vineyard workers I yes? See. yes they're part of the vineyard now jesus is vineyard but he's the vine and they're the branches john would say but he's the vineyard and he's now given it to vin new vineyard work the steward mm -hmm. or the owner of the vineyard and new vineyard workers okay mm -hmm. okay if we flip the page on 46 John 17 is what, I mean, it's, it's such a, a, a lovely, um, I, I don't know what the right word is. Um, it is lovely and it goes right to the heart of Jesus and, and, and so much of who Jesus is and um, uh, where his, his heart is, but it's also a kind of fearful thing in, in, in the face of, of death, what Jesus was saying to his, to his uh, followers. But uh, let's just pick up when, when, when Jesus uh, starts praying for himself and his disciples in, in John chapter 17. Mm -hmm. So we're still talking about how God makes this transition where Jesus has been held up uh, throughout John as the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and how then does the church get folded into that? How does the church receive Jesus's own identity as that, that place where heaven and earth meet, where God and humans dwell together? How mm -hmm. is how is the church uh, the temple if, if, if Jesus has been the temple? 
right? Yes. Um, you know, we started out by asking that that question. Uh, we, the church is is in in First Peter two in verse four and five. You also, this is on page forty three. You also, like living stones, are being built into a, a spiritual house to be a, a holy priest priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, Paul says to the church, we are the temple of God, right? Mm -hmm. So how did we get to be the temple of God in Jesus Christ, right? So John is John 17 is, is one way that this happens in the New Testament. Let's begin reading in verse 1. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those who have given you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by com completing the work you have, you gave me to do. And now father glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I mean, just an aside here, this is just astonishing, isn't it? Yes. I mean, uh, if Jesus is not the embodiment of God himself, um, he is a wacko because he's saying, Father, I want you to worship and glorify me in your presence. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just astonishing. Anyway, yes, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they will still, they are still in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I think last time we talked about those passages in First Kings, uh, where uh, God promises when he glorifies the temple in, in, in Israel's history, and he promises that he'll put his name there forever, right? Mm -hmm. Glorify my name, mm -hmm. uh, John chapter 12. Um, and while I was with them, verse 12, I protected them and kept them. I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture should be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have full the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the word has hate and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I'm not of it, sanctify them, make them what? Holy. Make them holy. Make them holy by uh, the truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. You sent me into the world mm -hmm. as the temple of God. And I am sending them as mm -hmm. the father has sent me, John 20, I'm mm -hmm. sending you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, verse 20, the climax. My prayer is not for them alone. 
My prayer is not just for the, the disciples that I've been training. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. All right. Now the prayer is for the Jesus movement and the church much more widely and beyond the, the, the disciples who, uh, who Jesus knew of in this moment. That all of them may be one, Father. I'm praying that they will all be one. Just as you are in me and I am in you. So the Father and the Son are somehow one. Interpenetrating, mm -hmm. connected, like a temple connectivity. Mm -hmm. Father and Son together. They're one. Mm-hmm. That all of them may be one too, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. That they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Now, if you go back to where we started this course in John chapter one, mm -hmm. okay, John chapter one, we have seen his glory, the, the glory of God's one and only, right? Full of yes. grace and truth. And we made the case at, at, at the very outset of the course that John is, is saying that Jesus is the renewed tabernacle. The word became flesh and tabernacled, pitched his tent among us. Yes. We have seen his glory, it goes on to say. Mm -hmm. We've seen that glory that filled the tabernacle in Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Now, the glory that you gave me, I have given to them. So in John, this is how the church becomes the temple. The hmm. church lives in Jesus just as Jesus lives in the Father. Amen. There is this, this union, mysterious union, where we are drawn into the life of God and we live into the life of God and God surrounds us and yet God is within us. Yes. He's within us on earth. And he's raised us into the heavens and he surrounds us in Jesus Christ there. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And this is how Paul works it out in Ephesians 2. The third way, the church becomes the temple. Okay. Yes. I'm going to take a little break and, and soothe my throat so that my voice doesn't squeak any more than the usual. Okay. This is really good. This is really good, by the way. I've tied these scriptures in many times as far as us being the church, but never connecting it all to the temple. So I appreciate this class. This is this is really good. I, yes. I'm I'm grateful for that. And that's encouraging to me, brother. I, I, I'm grateful for your encouragement. OK, so now I want you to turn to Ephesians uh, chapter two. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to do. Pauline temple theology with you and and show you how the church becomes the temple in Paul all right yes I'm I'm just going to start uh I I think at about verse six of chapter two And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now, that language gets glossed over. Most church folks just gloss over that language because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus ascends into heaven, he takes us along with him. Mm -hmm. 
God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This mm -hmm. Johannine, John's, you know, glorify them, right? I and them and they and me, and, and uh, just as uh, you and I are one, they be one with us, right? This mm -hmm. union. In Paul, this is, this is a kind of baptismal union that takes a mysterious faith union that takes place where we are buried with him in baptism mm -hmm. and then raised with Christ through our faith in the power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead. And we ascend into the heavens in Christ. Hmm. Is this, is this making any sense? Yes. It's this ascension of, of Jesus into the, the the seat or the throne of, of everything mm -hmm. and us being drawn with Jesus into the heavens is the number one part of the gospel of Jesus Christ that almost never gets proclaimed. Hmm. It almost never gets proclaimed and it, it's, it is so central to everything that Paul believes. Hmm that we have been raised with Christ and seated with Christ in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Okay. All right. Yes. You just, just have to follow those words very carefully in verse six. Uh, and, and uh, I guess you, it, what, what happened for me was I just started taking them in the most literal way I could in trying to make sense of them. All right. Yes. And then, then slowly it, it, it started to dawn on me over a period of 15 or 20 years. Now, verse seven, in order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. See, there's a heavenly treasury up there. Mm -hmm. There's incomparable riches. Hmm. And he's going to express uh, those riches in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Where are we? In the heavenlies with him. Yes. And in, in verse seven, we, where are we? Uh, I think on earth. Oh. Well, yes, but here, here's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it, read it again. Verse seven, okay. in order that in coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Okay. So where are we? In Christ Jesus. There it is. There's the answer. Okay. Somehow we are mystically joined to Christ. And I don't pretend to know how this works. Right. No, I know that, that ritually the church in, enacts this in baptism and in the uh -huh. Lord's Supper, right? Yes. In, the, in, in, in these uh, 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 major worshipful events where we, we enact this mystery of union with Jesus. Mm -hmm. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God. None of us can ascend into the heavens by ourselves. Dead people don't do much ascending. Okay. All right. It's the gift of God, not by works. You didn't do this because you were a Jew. You didn't do this because you kept Jewish law or anything else for that matter. So that nobody can boast about it. Yes. It's, it's, it's all a gift. You know, it's mm -hmm. all a gift for we are God's workmanship. Workmanship. Listen to that word. Uh -huh. We're God's craftsmanship. Okay. Created in where? Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, the temple. To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Therefore, verse 11, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Where does God dwell with Israel in the world? In the temple? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do the Gentiles get to go into the temple? 
No, because they're not they're clean. Going, they're unclean. There's a, a dividing wall of hostility okay. between Jew and Gentile. The Gentiles are barred from entrance. In fact, there's a special court of the Gentiles hmm. farther out that the Gentiles who want to be close to God can come to, but they can't enter without being circumcised. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Now, now listen real carefully. Okay. When Jesus died on the cross, what was, what, what did he say he was doing? When he dies and is right, raising, being raised again. I'm sorry about my grammar, but but what what's what's happening? Do you remember what Jesus said? This was all about, or John says tells us what this is all about in John chapter two when Jesus demonstrates against the temp the temple. Uh no, I mean, maybe I don't know. No, I don't know. Well, that, what Jesus is doing in his death and resurrection in John chapter two is rebuilding the temple. Oh, wow. Destroy this temple and I'll build it again in, in three, three days. days. Yes. Okay. All right. Huh. But now in Christ, this is verse 13. Now in Christ, Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Yes. Remember, the Gentiles have been excluded, but now Jesus has reinaugurated the sacrificial system, and mm -hmm. the Gentiles get to be part of that sacrificial system. Hmm. Verse 14, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, hmm. between Jew and Gentile, mm -hmm. all the nations and the Jewish nation, thus making peace between them. Is this making sense? Yes. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Mm -hmm. Now verse 19, here's the payoff for us. Consequently, you, he's talking to Ephesians, so we think that most of them were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, you Gentiles, you, you eth ethnic peoples, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. I should mm -hmm. say members of God's house. Okay. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Mm-hmm. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Hmm. Jesus has remade the temple and he's brought the Gentiles into the temple and they have access to the same father through the same spirit. Right, right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so where now here's 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 the test to see if you've grasped this. Where is this temple? Are you asking me that? I'm I'm asking any of the the, the people who are uh, uh, in yes. attendance. There's three there. There are three of you tonight. No, there's only two. Okay. Or maybe three of you tonight. Where is the temple? Your question is, where is the temple? 
where where is this temple where the dividing wall of hostility has been taken down and there's no longer a court of the gentiles and a court of uh, uh, for the 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 holy jews you know where's this temple at in heaven yes hmm. the heavenly temple has been remade jesus when he ascends into heaven remakes the temple into himself hmm. he becomes that 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 mysterious place where God and humanity dwell together in heaven. Hmm. And we have been raised with Christ and we are seated in Christ Jesus in the heavenly realms in some mysti mystical and spiritual way that we don't really know, except that we know that from, from the very beginning when the priests entered into the Holy of Holies, the priest ascended up the, the cosmic mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And all of the people were represented in the priest as he ascends into the Holy of Holies. Mm. And in that sense, in that priestly sense where Jesus ascends and we ascend in him, we have been blessed with every spiritual. Go to, go to chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, 3. Mm -hmm. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Where? In heaven. Well, read the text. <laughs> I think the, the scripture, the text. I don't have it in front of me, but I think it says in heavenly places, right? Heavenly it realms. Does say, it does say in the heavenly places. Praise mm -hmm. be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. In Christ Jesus. <laughs> in Christ. There you go. There, you there go. it is. Amen. There's John's. There's John's union again. Okay. It's it's a Paul's union. The gospel is that people who come to Jesus, right, come to Jesus in faith, are brought into Christ. Huh. That they they are unified with Christ. How does Jesus unite us with God? Well, Jesus is united with God, and when we are united with Christ, we are reunited with God. That's what makes him the perfect mediator between God and man. Mm -hmm. The man, Jesus Christ, is doing that for us because we have been drawn into the very, in the very heavens with God. Mm -hmm. he's, he's called us up. And, and so our citizenship, right? right? Our, citizen, our citizenship is where? In heaven. In heaven. <laughs> because yeah. we're in Christ. Amen. All of this, all of this, see, then opens up the whole New Testament for you in a new way. Yes, it does. Amen. The whole New <laughs> Testament will never be the same for you. It will always now be, I am raised with Christ. And I'm I'm built into this this temple. Let's let's look at, at the, my first paragraph after the reading on page forty seven. All right. Mm -hmm. Here the church members are called fellow citizens, sum politi. All right. They're together. They're together as as citizens. Uh, they are fellow citizens of God's house. Okioi to Theo. They're the house of God. They are seen as a structural temple as well as a dynast dynastic priestly family. This is the problem I have with the NIV's translation. I don't know what version you read, but the NIV says household, and household means family. It hmm. doesn't mean house, right? So in English, house. Household doesn't cut it because it's a double entendre in Greek. You huh. know what I mean by double entendre? I've it heard has of a that. Double meaning. Oh, okay, thank you. It, it has a double meaning. Okay. In Greek, you are a member of God's house. That means you're built into the structure of God's house, and it means that you're a, a family member of the dynasty. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the NIV does this some service because we we don't talk about i'm a member of a house anymore we we say household 
but it also loses the double entendre. Hmm. All right. They are seen as a structural temple as well as a dynam dynastic and priestly family. And the whole building, the oikodome, or the entire temple complex, grows and is built together so as to support the holy shrine or the temple, the naus itself. And finally, the temple is the dwelling, uh, the dwelling place, uh, uh, that, that place in Greek, that dwelling place of God. In various ways, then, Paul draws a picture of the church as the temple. Hmm. The church became a dwelling place of God as a direct consequence, Ara, verse 19, of Christ's reconciling work done on the cross. You remember that part, verse 16? Jesus dies on the cross, and so the Jew and the Gentile become one, and they get the same access to God. Okay. And thus, in this passage, the cross is Jesus's act of remaking the temple. What has changed in the temple? The dividing, the dividing wall, wall of hostility has been taken down in the heavenly temple, hmm. which most commentators identify as that partition between the court of the nations and the more holy precincts of the Jerusalem te temple is taken down in Jesus's renewed temple. In Christ himself, a new priesthood of one humanity is formed, which represents and integrates both Jews and the nations and the Gentiles. The temple, by bestowing the same spirit upon all races, makes access to the Father come through a common temple access point. Okay? Mm -hmm. The question then arises at the bottom of page 47, where is this remade? an ethnically integrated temple. And the brothers answered it, that for us. It's in heaven. Mm -hmm. Certainly the Jerusalem complex was not physically renovated without a court of the Gentiles. Historically, that didn't happen. Paul, thoroughly Jewish, expects that Yahweh's throne is in, in the heavens. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. Paul somehow sees that the dividing wall between Israel and the nations has been taken down in the heavenly temple. I don't know how he see, sees that. He says at one point that he was taken up into the third heaven. You remember that text? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, that's what he sees or if it's just like a second Corinthians three moment when he's staring into the face of Jesus hmm. and he's being transformed in ever increasing glory. I don't know if he sees into the temple and has an experience of that, but one thing, in one way or another, Paul has this vision of heaven and the, the new temple made up in heaven, and there is no longer a dividing wall of hostility between Jews and Gentiles. And Christ's death ushers in the re reconstruction of a heavenly temple wherein Jew and Greek are together enveloped by Christ in heaven as much as they are indwelled by Christ on earth. So what happens now when we do a, a mission work where different races or different nationalities come together in Christ to do good things together and are integrated in, in, in a way that, that makes them one? What, what's that look like? That becomes a sign of what? I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I was. I'm sorry. That that's okay. Uh, I I'm I go so, fast. So if if in Indianapolis, uh, one of the things that we do every once in a while is 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 the black churches of Christ and the white churches of Christ get together. Mm -hmm. Or when. I go to Light of the World Christian Church, which is traditionally a disciples church, but it's it's just uh, more like a, a mainline evangelical uh, African American church. And uh, uh, what happens when when different races, ethnicities, different nations come together? Unity. Yes. It's a sign of heaven, right? 
Yes. Yeah. It's a sign of what's real in heaven. Mm -hmm. In heaven, every nation under heaven is built in underneath the altar of God. Mm -hmm. And so when when Jew and Gentile get together, it's it's a it's a, an expression of God's universal uh, temple that now exists in the heavens. Hmm. So the temple is not just a Jewish thing anymore. It's a temple for all people. Amen. Amen. So three, the three ways, give me the three ways that the, there are probably several ways I could probably mm -hmm. articulate, but I gave you three ways that the church becomes the temple. Tell me what they are. <laughs> the three ways that the church becomes the temple. Give me, give me three, give me three parts of scripture that that shows you that the church has become the temple, and 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 reason through that with me. Well, I would say John nineteen is that the scripture we were reading where Jesus prays yeah. seventeen. Okay. John seventeen. Yes. Where Jesus just gives the church his own glory, right? Yes. The simple glory that resides in Jesus, he gives to the gives to the church. That's yes. a simple, that's a simple answer. That's one way. Okay. Give me another way. Um in Ephesians 2 6 is what I have written down. It, well, the, the key verse, the yes. key verse in Ephesians is is 19 through 22. Okay. 19 through 22. Yeah. And that's saying that where the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself, and we are carefully joined together in him. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the Keep walls, going. the walls, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. No, I was, um, um, I was saying uh, one of the ones we talked about was the walls of division being removed. Um, and now the church being one and unified in uh, with the Jews. Right. Yes. So, so Jesus is, if, if Jesus is the temple and somehow we have been raised with Jesus into the heavenly realms in Christ yeah. Jesus, mm -hmm. then we become the temple in Jesus. In Christ, yes. right. Because we've been built into that temple in the in the heavens. So in him, the whole building is joined together and rises together. to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, too, you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So uh, uh, Paul in Ephesians 2 is saying we've been built into the temple of Jesus in the heavens. That's mm -hmm. how the church is now the temple. Okay. And then how did Mark how did Mark tell the story of how it came to be? Or how did know. Jesus tell the story as it's recorded in Mark? I don't know. I'm I'm going over to it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't write it down. I didn't write them all down. I think it was Mark twelve though. Yes, that's Maybe. very good. You got okay. it. Mark twelve. Okay. So that was all in the vineyard. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, and it says the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. And what happens in the story? Oh. Um, They, when, he built when the owner of the vineyard finally comes back. Yes. He sends the son, the son's killed. Right. They're going to try to take the inheritance. Yes. But when he's the, owner give, of the yep. vineyard himself returns, he's going to give it to the others. In the parable of the tenant, in the parable of the tenants, Jesus says that he's going to yank control of the temple out of the hands of the priests. And hand it to a new group of people, right? His, his followers. Okay. 
So that's one way that the synoptic gospels, Matthew and Mark and Luke, tell the story of how the church is going to become the temple. Okay. Paul tells the story of the temple in, well, we have been raised with Christ and built into a, a, a heavenly temple in Christ Jesus because our union with Christ. That's, that's how the church becomes one. In John, we become the temple because Jesus gives us his temple glory. The glory that you gave me, I have given it to them. Hmm. Those are the three ways I've given you to make that transition and to say that the church now is the temple of God. Okay. All right. Yes. Got it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. All right. So if, if, if I were like a college professor and, and I, I were going to give you a test, could you, could you make an A on that essay? After I do another review. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm trying to save okay. us, Aubrey. Thank Go you. ahead and do that other review and get that get that deep in, into your head. Because once it's in your head, it will start to seep into your soul. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's not fair because that's just the way I'm wired. I'm okay. wired. If I get it into my head then my head can start sending these messages and I can pray that into my soul. Some people somehow get the thing into their soul and they, right. they, 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 they start, start from the soul trying to find reasons in their head to make sense of it. Okay. And, and I think people work both ways, but yes. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty much wired from the head down. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, some people are wired from the heart to the head. Interesting. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's wonderful. We need we need people like that. Um, but I I'm I'm not wired that way as much. I I'm the I'm the kind of guy that cries over theology, and and most people don't cry over theology. They cry <laughs> when when somebody's singing them a song. You know. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so that yes. that the church is the temple. Amen. The church is the temple. Did you guys have uh, 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 experiences or, or you know, how, how was your energy level when uh, you talked about these um, ministries with potential on page 48? These are kind of things that, that my church has done. What did, did you get like lot, lots of energy or, or did it sound exhausting for you? I thought that they sounded... Uh... Like they had a lot, the energy, like they had energy. What was it? Generates energy. Yes. So you, you, you felt like that, that generated energy for you? you or yes. Were you, were you a five or were you a four or? I gave a five on all of them, but the last one. Okay. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think the last one. Oh. Last one was the water bottle that said grace is free. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 you can only do that like once a year at the parade. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I've enjoyed tonight. Me too. I I have taken great delight in being able to see your, both of your faces. Thank you. Yes, it makes me makes me happy. And, and so <laughs> when I when I pray for the. The, the six or seven students that have showed up. I, I can't, I, I just pray for all the other ones who are watching on uh, YouTube too, but yes. y'all are just an anonymous to me. I, I, I I'm just praying, praying for the world that, that, that came to believe in Jesus uh, through Jesus' disciples. That's, that, that's all you are to me, names. But yes. when I see your face and I hear your voice, uh, I, I come to know a little bit about who you are and i i will uh be praying for you all uh thank this you week. Uh, thank you uh next same week, here brother appreciate it i, I appreciate it. oh you, you you owe me some uh, mission materials yes sir i was just thinking about that i need to uh how do you want me to send it to you send send them to my email or, okay, send, we'll or do. Send, send a link or to wherever you want me to go and uh, okay I will do because i 
I really want to rework this, this workbook to where it, it, it fits a wider variety of contexts. Yes, sir. And so, um, and, and also I, I, I want to learn. I, I have trouble imagining because I wasn't raised in a missional church. I have trouble imagining what the practices are for missional church. And I'm the preacher trying to lead this transition. And I still have trouble imagining what this looks like. Yeah. So uh, uh, your, your experience, tell me just a, a little bit about um, uh, your experience uh, and your settings as, as uh, we leave. Audrey, uh, where, where do you um, serve and worship? Um, I serve at, well, I, I serve and worship at my church right now is Clearpoint in Pasadena, Texas, but we what, don't what serve. Part there's, of, what part of Pasadena is, I, I used to work in Pasadena. Oh, uh, it's off the Beltway. It's off, off of Beltway 8? Uh-huh, yes. And then I also, I, so my church doesn't do outreach or anything really. And so I serve at Star of Hope, which is downtown uh, Houston. Okay. And that's been really awesome. So, so your experience of missional church has been serving at Star of Hope. Yes. And then I also serve a foster mom. I clean for her that I've done for a few years now. That's, so. that's fascinating. Well, I want to hear as, as time goes along this semester, more and more about that. And yes, uh, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm excited about trying to make this transition in my own, a little, our, our, our congregation was, was, and it still is in many ways, a, a little country church in the middle of this big city. Hmm. But I'm finding out that, that if you, if you really work with inner city people, uh -huh. country people do a better job of that than suburban people. Huh. They're more naturally like inner city people. Interesting. And the, the cultural divide is is bigger. I'm not saying that suburban people can't do a great job. I'm, right. just, I'm just saying that uh, it's it's not as big a, a, of a, a handicap as what I imagine uh, hmm. to be reaching out to the inner city. And um uh, but it, it's 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 a long way from the little farm I was raised on. Wow. It's because oh. they're more authentic. They're more authentic. Yes. And, yes. And and I find that a lot. I work with them. Um, I have an event I have to host in Houston next month. And it's 150 millionaires and billionaires in the area who all come together and they contribute to a lot of what we do. Um, I think I mentioned to you last week, one of them was Goya Foods. They donate like 12 pallets a day and a bunch of other guys, like they they all pitch in. And and um, I find that country folk, they're just more authentic and, and they don't have to try to be, because I work, I work with a lot of youth who, who they see the killing, they see this, they see that. And if you try to be that and you're not, mm -hmm. they read straight through it. And yeah. they appreciate someone who just comes and they're like, you know, hey, buddy, let me take you to the farm. It just, you know, they like, uh, they like, they, they like what's real. They like authentic. Yes. And it, you don't have to, um, I see more and more where there's this thing like you're talking about now. It's just church culture. We can remove uh, our cultures out of it and mm -hmm. just be church culture with who I am. And I love my brother with well, the way I am and my sister, the way I am, man, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So it's, it's good, man. It's good. I, I love this. I am, I am trying to learn how, how to lead a, a multi-ethnic church. Hmm. Um, so many of our, our members, I, we, we, we moved into our community development project, uh, a Haitian family, and I had mm -hmm. three years of high school French. Mm -hmm. And so you ought to watch me try, trying to relearn my high school French to talk with these, these, these brothers. And, 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 and he has started uh, leading prayers and he, he writes them in English and he, he, 
he is starting to say his prayers in church in English. Mm -hmm. uh, before I, I had tried to, to uh, uh, translate them <laughs> from his French <laughs> to English, and it was I, I, I got about a C plus sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, 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 it, it's 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 fun uh, and exciting, but yet very daunting for me to think about um, Haitian immigrants and um, Hispanic culture mm -hmm. and uh, traditional Black culture in 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 this area. And it's it it's it's a lot of fun and it's exciting, and yet I I worry about messing it up <laughs> with mm -hmm. all with all my blind spots, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I know that helps us too, we do a, um, we do what's called the outreach tree. And, mm -hmm. and, and what we do as far as evangelism, because a lot of it is not necessarily going out and evangelizing. A lot of it is just becoming evangelism and uh -huh. our daily life. Um, mm -hmm. One practice that we do is not to judge people, but rather, um, so when we read scripture and when we, when we read the word, we think of a person that that scripture relates to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say, oh, that person's no good and they need to this. And it. it's not that it's right. just right. realistically, realistically, that person fits in this mold of what the scripture is saying. They need this. So, and what we try to do with that is the next time we see that person, we have a word from them from, from the word, not our mm -hmm. own opinions. So and that helps if you're just reading the scripture and and like I said, first apply it to ourselves, but then think of who who could this help, you know, and then and that helps whenever you meet somebody who's going through the same thing as that person, because now you have scripture to go back and help that person. It's still, it's a memory marker. Um, hmm. We also create a ministry map is what we call it. So we say, hey, three people this month that I know I need to witness to. I need to share the gospel with. And then we challenge ourselves and we we follow up with one another. Hey, did you finish your ministry map? Did you go meet that person? And then it becomes easier when you just be when you just get in the practice of no intentionally, habits. intentionally, okay. right, intentionally doing evangelism because it's supposed to be who we are and it moves you out of the the the, the um the boxes that we sometimes put ourselves in as far as yeah. sharing the gospel. And, yes. and if you have a brother or sister who's challenging you to become evangelistic, it's, it's so helpful. So once we accomplish those three, then we, and then we start discipling them. We tell them, Hey, we know you got three people that you can reach this month and I'll help you share the gospel with them until they get comfortable enough to do it. Um, and, and it's, 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 just, it's really just encouraging <laughs> people to have those conversations, right? That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. It, it. You leave the results up to God. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. And I, I talked to you last time. We used one one method is really good um, um, with the with the red light, green light, yellow light method. That method is uh -huh. so awesome. The um, if they if they reject the word, keep moving. If they if they. Baba says that some said that they would think on, we will think on these matters. Okay. If they're going to think on it, make sure you follow up with them. Give them a few weeks, give them a month and follow up the green lights immediately disciple them. You know, don't, don't just invite them to church. No. Okay. You, you accepted the word. I'm going to see you tomorrow. And then hmm. it, and, and then they feel that love. They feel that's what Jesus did. He discipled them. He didn't just say, Hey, meet me next, meet me next Sunday at the, at the temple, <laughs> at the synagogue. Right. You know? right. right. So, it's it's you it's you a lot it, of practice friend that's it that's yes. it so uh it's a lot of little things like that um that we do and um planting little churches all over teaching people how to um divide the word not necessarily like like you you you're studied and you're learned but for some people we we tell them use the sort method which is very something really simple as far as um reading scripture and just simply say, where do you see God in this? Mm -hmm. What did God do? Uh, where do you see man? And then what to do and what not to do. Those four little things. And a, a, mm. anybody can read the Bible and say, hey, um, I, I'm reading through here. And uh, God uh, was going through the garden with Adam. Okay, so he's visiting Adam. And then they start getting revelation by some, a simple practice rather than saying, hey, go understand the Greek and the Hebrew. You know right. what I mean? So. 
Uh, where was man? Oh, man was in the in the garden waiting for God to come speak, and, and just little things like that. You know, That's what good. to do? Don't. Oh, what to do? Don't. You know, what not to do? Don't eat the fruit. If God said not to do it, then don't do it. And and a person can just take a, a simple approach to scripture, sure. and then they can enjoy it more rather than trying to um, study it and, and not get anything out of it because they're beating themselves up. Um, right. So li- little things like that, man, just help so much as far as wow. building the people. Uh, well, you know, that's in some ways those people are going to thrive mm-hmm. if, they, if they have if they have somebody like you who is studying and yes, who is who is really working at it so yes, that sir. they so that the whole thing can 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 just kind of spontaneously evolve in 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 the right kinds of spirit led directions and yes and sir you're, you're being trained in a way to protect that system from mm-hmm. going off the deep end but they wouldn't know it's the deep end but you know it's right. the deep end because you've <laughs> you've really studied it mm-hmm. yes sir so uh yeah very very good this has been a delightful conversation and i, oh, I hope absolutely. There are more and more of these now that the 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 in-depth i promise you the in-depth theology has been laid down mm-hmm. and so now from now on we're going to be talking about mission and ideas for for how to be out into the world and and collectively as the church ministering in and with the world for um for christ's glory Amen. yes sir it's been a great Amen. great time tonight Thank absolutely you. and i'll send that um I send it's a PDF that we have. It's a lot of pages. Um, and I, I, the guy who taught it to me, we took what we needed and applied it to the church. Of course, with everything you want to take what's good and what you don't agree with, maybe then, Hey, throw it out. But there's a lot of principles that we took sure. and we used it for our, our evangelistic team um, in the church. So yeah, I'll send that to you tonight. All right. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Absolutely. You too, brother. Thank you. Talk to you next week. God bless. All right. Don't 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 forget to do the next discussion. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bye. 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 Bye.